brothers and sisters, now a few milestones that I suggest to myself first and foremostly, and I share with you as well. Where we need to begin and how to follow it through with our children, should we hope to see our children in Jannah and not the fuel for Jahannam? Should we want our children to be the coolness of our eyes? Should we want our children to be dutiful to us the same way we try to be dutiful to our mothers and fathers? If you want your child to be a witness for you, not against you, Yom Al Qiyamah. If you want your child to be an extension of your life on the day of judgment, allowing you to have hasanat, good deeds that you could not have accumulated by yourself. If you crave to be this person, I certainly do. Then let us consider the following milestones. Where does it begin? Milestone number one. It begins, dear brothers and sisters, before the child is born. Allahu Akbar. You want to speak about tarbiyah, we want to discuss the good upbringing of a child, it begins before he even exists. And that is when we come to choose his mother, her mother, and when she comes to choose the father of that child. Correct spouse choosing is a key ingredient in the good tarbiyah of a child. Therefore, brothers and sisters, a plea to myself and a plea to others, let us not be selfish when choosing our spouse, she's not going to be just your lover, but she's going to be the mother of your children. Beware of selfish spouse choosing. Think about the children. She's going to be the mother of your child. And as Muhammad al-Muqaddim, he said, although the role of a man, the role of a husband, the role of the father is essential in the raising of a, of, of a righteous child. But he said, when we look into the biographies of every great reformer in the deen of Islam, the virtue belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than his mother. There would not have been a Zubayr ibn Awam, that warrior of Islam, who was given tidings of paradise numerous times without his mother, Safiya bint Abdul Muttalib. He was a carbon copy of his mother. There could not have been a Abdullah ibn Ja'far without his mother, Asma bint Umais, who raised him because his father wasn't around. The virtue belongs to Allah than his mother. There could not have been a Muawiyah, Ibn Abi Sufyan radiyallahu anil jami'ah, without his mother, Hind bint Utbah. And when Abu Sufyan wanted to take pride, he would say, Ana ibn Hind, I am the son of Hind, the son of my mother. And when his mother was seen carrying Muawiyah when he was still a baby, they said, looks like your son Muawiyah is going to be the leader of his tribe. She said, May I lose this baby of mine if he is only a leader to his tribe. And thus Muawiyah became the Khalifa of the Muslims through the aspirations of who? His mother. I am the son of Hind. There could not have been Umar ibn Abdul Aziz without his righteous mother who raised him, Umm Asim, bint Asim, the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Virtue belongs to Allah, then Ha. And of course, the father as well. There could not have been a Sufyan al Thawri without his mother, Imam al Bukhari without his mother, Rabi'at al Ra'i without his mother. There could not have been even Abdul Rahman al Nasr, the one who would conquer the Iberian Peninsula and enter the land of Andalusia, where Islam would light the four corners of this beautiful place for over 800 years. And then he would take his men to reach parts of Switzerland and parts of Italy and the heart of France. But it wasn't the father because his father was killed by his uncle. But his mother was the one who took care of him and raised him. Therefore, brothers and sisters, I reiterate and I remind myself and others, beware of selfish spouse choosing and see the bigger picture that Allah Ta'ala has painted for us with regards to children. It begins the first milestone with the correct spouse choosing. The second of these milestones, if we want to ensure the security of the hereafter of our children, is to ensure our own righteousness and taqwa. I fear for my children, I'm sure you do too. Let the first step, brothers and sisters, after you have chosen that righteous woman, be a look into the mirror every single day as you reconsider your habits. Am I a righteous person? There is a link between your piety and the piety of your children. A link that Allah has made. Thus Allah says in chapter 4 of the Quran, Allah 
Allah says, let those guardians, let those guardians have the same fear in their minds that they would for their own children had they left children who are weak. Allah says, so let them fear Allah. What is the implication of the ayah? The subtle implication is that if you are a person who fears for your children, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa of Allah. Therefore, my flirtatious behavior, God forbid, should it happen with the opposite gender. And my giving an attentive ear to audio material or my eye to visual material, that is haram. Or one of our dear sisters walking out the house without her hijab or any other addiction or secret habit that we are perpetuating, realize that this may show up in your progeny. It may show up in my children because there is a link. Thus Sa'id ibn Musayyib, he would say to his son, Wallahi, inni la'atadhakkaruka fi salati fa'azidu fiha min ajli salahik. Oh my son, sometimes I am praying and then I remember you. And therefore I make my prayer extra long hoping that through this, Allah will make you righteous. So they realized that our righteousness and our resist resisting of temptation and our dropping of habits and our waking up for Fajr Salah, I'm not missing out on any Salah. This will have a direct influence on the righteousness of our children. This is the second milestone. <coughs> now, Alhamdulillah, the young Muslim man, the young Muslim woman is married. But even before marital relations take place that evening, our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has instructions to give Allahu Akbar. Why? Because of the children that may come out from this relationship, subhanAllah. What did he say? As Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Ibn Abbas, لَوْ أَنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ أَتَى أَهْلَهُ فَقَالَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ أَلَّهُمَ جَنِّبْنَا الشَّيْطَانِ وَجَنِّبِ الشَّيْطَانَ مَا رَزَقْتَنَا فَقُضْلِيَ بَيْنَهُمَا وَلَدْ لَمْ يَضُرَّهُ He says, if any one of you wants to approach his spouse in marital relations, and then says before doing so, Bismillah in the name of Allah. Oh Allah, I ask you to push shaitan away from us and push him away from our children. The Prophet ﷺ says, if a child emerges from that relationship, shaitan will not harm him. Then the wife, Alhamdulillah, Allah blesses her with a child. She becomes pregnant. There is another milestone given to us by the Prophet ﷺ. Why? So that when the child emerges, it emerges into a nest of Tawheed, a nest of Islam, a red carpet entrance. Look, never mind trying to raise your child and advise him and taking him to the masjid when he hits the age of 14 and 15 and 16 and then complaining that the child is not listening to me. The tarbiyah is beginning even before the child is born. She is now pregnant and here comes milestone number four. What is that milestone? Dua. Dua. Till the child is born. What did the mother of Mary, Maryam alayhi salam say when she was pregnant, not knowing if it's a boy or a girl? She said, Rabbi inni nadartu laka ma fi batwani muharrara fataqabbal minni innaka anta sami'u al-alim. Oh Allah, listen to this beautiful dua. I wish we can make a similar dua. Encourage our wives to do so. Oh Allah, I have pledged for you that which is in my womb. That which is in my womb, I have pledged it for your service. Ya Salam. So please accept it from me. You are the all hearing, the all knower. She wanted a male. She wanted a boy so that she can dedicate this boy to the service of the Masjid, Masjid Al-Aqsa. But then she gave birth. She found it was a girl. And therefore she said in her dua, Rabbi, inni wadatuha untha, oh Allah, I have given birth to a girl. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at and Allah knows very well what she had given birth to. She says, wa inni sammaytuha Maryam, wa inni u'aiduha bika wa dhurriyataha min ash-shaytan al-rajim. And I have called her Maryam, and I ask you, O oh Allah, to protect her and her offspring from the cursed devil. MashaAllah. What was the response because of the dua? فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ Allah accepted this child of hers with a great acceptance. وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنٍ And Allah nurtured her a great nurturing, a good nurturing. Dua, this is the blessing of dua even before the child appears in the hospital. Allahu Akbar. And this was the dua that the Prophet of Allah Ibrahim made for his offspring. Where Allah said to him, إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا I'm going to make you an imam 
O Ibrahim, a leader for all people. But what was Ibrahim thinking about? He said, Wa min dhurriyati. Oh Allah, what about my offspring? Rabbi Jalni, he would also say, Rabbi Jalni, muqim al salati. Wa min dhurriyati. Oh Allah, please make me a man who always establishes the prayer and my offspring as well. Make so much dua for your children even before they emerge. Let us not keep the dua late when they start going astray. Ya Rabbi, bring them back. Ya Rabbi, remove drugs from them. Ya Rabbi, make the masjid their home. Ya Rabbi, make them students of knowledge. Let us begin this before they are even received into this difficult life. After nine strenuous months of pregnancy, Alhamdulillah, she delivers. But before the umbilical cord is cut, there is another milestone. Ya Salam. There is another prophetic instruction. Why? For the deen of that child when he grows up. What is that milestone? This is number five. To give adhan in the ear of the child. This must be the first thing that he hears. Why? Because the identity of a Muslim is summarized within those beautiful words of adhan. You say to him gently in his right ear, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. Being informed from that young age, don't allow any worry. Any concern to be greater than your concern for Allah. This is your identity. You are a muwahid. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that none is worthy of worship except Allah. This is my aqidah. This is my creed. From that age. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of Allah. Yeah, that's that's your that's your role model. That's your guide. His sunnah is your methodology. Hayya ala salat. The baby hears. Come to prayer. Because he's going to be a person of worship, inshallah. Hayya al falah. Come to success. This is the definition of success. From that young age, when he's still a few minutes old, he's being told that your success is in knowing your Creator and dedicating your life to Him. That is falah. That is success. Allahu Akbar. Look at how keen our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in order to ensure that there was a red carpet entrance into the dunya protected from shaitan and ready to establish the deen the moment he's walking on his two feet. What else? The baby is washed. The umbilical cord is trimmed. And then he's taken home. And now it's a question of choosing a name for this beautiful boy or girl. What name do we choose? Here comes another milestone. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ will not leave us alone because his eyes is on the deen of Islam and the carriers of this deen and that will be that child. Name calling, he has something to say. Thus, Abi Dawood narrates in his sunnah on the authority of the companion Abi Wahab in Al-Jushami that the Messenger وسلم, said, Tasammu bi asma'i al-anbiya wa ahabu al-asma'i ila Allahi abdullahi wa abdul rahman wa asdaquha harithun wa hammam wa aqbahuha wa abghaduha ila Allahi harbun wa murrah He said the two most beloved names. He said, name your children after the Prophets. And the two most beloved names to Allah is Abdullah and Abdul Rahman, the slave of Allah and the slave of Al Rahman. And the two most truthful names is Harith and Hammam, names that indicate perpetual movement and perpetual thought. These are the two, two most truthful names. And he says, and the two most abhorrent and hated names to Allah is Harb and Murrah, war and bitterness. Why was he so keen alayhi salatu wasalam, to guide us even when it came to choosing the name of our children? Because he is aware that the name of a child would very much influence his or her character when they are older. Then the baby begins to grow even more. And the Messenger وسلم, has instructions as well. As Abi Dawood writes in his sunnah, that he would tell us to command the child to pray when he hits the age of seven. And to discipline him at the age of ten if he's not praying and to separate between the boys and the girls, brothers and sisters, to not sleep on the same bed. The companions would also raise their children to fast the month of Ramadan. And if they would cry because of hunger, they would give them al ayn cotton to play with, to distract them from their hunger, raising them to be great people from a young age.